Uh, it's social media in 2019, a seemingly harmless conversation that deteriorates into nastiness mm. and name calling. And now sites like Nextdoor, a place where people are supposed to find community, are turning into a forum for cyberbullying. And tonight, Denver 7's Make Lopez is going 360 on negative comments posted on social media. Should they be restricted, or is this just the ugly side of free speech? There was once a time, <laughs> getting to know your neighbor was a doorbell ring away. <laughs> But times have changed. Those rings have turned to pings. With more people turning to social media to find a sense of community. Only sometimes that social network can turn into a social nuisance with neighbors attacking one another over anything. So in the digital age, should people be allowed to say whatever they want on the internet, even if it's bad? A communications expert says there can be consequences to negative comments. Psychologists say this type of freedom can be good and bad, while community groups are coming up with their own rules. First, some context. Social media Media sites are starting to try to control the collective narrative. For the last few years, we've been focused on rebuilding our systems for removing harmful content. In May, Facebook announced an update to how it will enforce community standards, saying it's making progress but admitting... On bullying and harassment, uh, we have a lot of work still to do. Instagram is also making changes, announcing a new tool this month to restrict comments in some people. Nextdoor, meanwhile, is testing out a kindness reminder to encourage people to, quote, slow down and think before posting and ultimately be neighborly. The website says it believes healthy debate leads to stronger communities and a more informed society, but that there are guidelines. I have to approve each post. For word of mouth, Littleton Administrator Marie Nelson. So this is just kind of like my admin tools. Common decency comes down to the click of a button. When they are attacking someone personally and their character and stuff, then I delete the comment. She created this Facebook group for people to be able to have a safe place to go and share their stories. It started small at first. Now, three years later, we have 20,000 members. And she's seen how ugly things can get. How many comments would you say that you've had to remove? Oh, man. Oh. Thousands, thousands. But when people refuse to play nice, she has the power to do something about it. I think probably word of mouth house is close to a thousand members blocked from the group. If I'm asking you for a vet, I shouldn't be questioned on how I care for my dog. I want it to be a safe space. Social media is popular because people do want to connect with each other. That's DU professor Lynn Schofield Clark. She spent years studying the effects of social media. There's something about not being able to see the face of the person that you're reacting to that makes people feel free to say things that are nastier than they would in real life. She believes there's a value to this free speech, but says negative comments can have consequences. In Colorado, we have a state law now that says that people can be fined up to $750 for harassing somebody else online. <laughs> or even jail time. The messages that we put on social media last forever. Then there are the ripple effects. We tend to look at teenagers and think that they're the ones who bully each other and that we need to look out for them all the time, but they're learning it from their parents. And the effects on communities. We have a lot of fragile egos, I think, right now in the United States. Social media is so much about who we are as people. Psychologist Travis Heath says that social media gives people a chance to redefine themselves online. You can try on different hats of identity. All of that freedom can be, well, liberating, even the negative posts. I think for some people it is very cathartic. But it can also be overwhelming. I have to have an opinion and I have to have it now in real time. Causing like minds to flock together and attack differences of opinion with seeming indifference. I'm not going to feel as bad because I don't see how my words affect you. Even positive posts can have a negative effect. Everyone's sort of portraying this perfect life. Well, it's no wonder you're feeling depressed, right? Because it looks like they have a perfect life. For Heath, the bottom line is that people want to feel connected. Well, that seems like a basic human need, a basic human drive. But in reality, social media is just a small snapshot of people's lives and opinions. I've already decided who you are before I've taken the time to really get to know you. Are you using social media or is social media using you? Like everything online, our post about this topic solicited a lot of opinions. Some people believe they should be able to say whatever they want to whoever they want, whenever they want. Others believe there should be limits. A tangled web of opinion says people consider the limits of free speech in the digital age. Megan Lopez, Denver 7. And 360 promises to bring you multiple perspectives on a topic. So if we missed your perspective, what do you think? Email us at 360 at the denverchannel.com or you can always leave us a comment on either the Denver 7 Facebook or Twitter page.